Good afternoon, this is Familiar Company Podcast. With us today is Vegas Vamp and Snake. We're going to talk about magic, Gnosticism, and some Eastern belief systems as well that intermingle with some of the overarching philosophy that we're going to talk about. It was truly a beautiful discussion, and I cannot wait for more. So, let's get to it. Nice! Okay, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm trying to, um, there we go. I think it works now. <laughs> awesome. Okay, no shares. But, okay, so first I wanted to introduce Vegas to Snake. Snake's a good friend of mine. I've known him for close to like a year and a half, two years now. Nice. What's up? <laughs> so nice, how you... to you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Nice to meet you, too. I love your I love your profile picture. It's really cool. Thank you. That um that talisman was made by a very close friend of mine. Um uh, it represents um foresight and being ready for obstacles and being able to overcome anything in my past. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. It's it's helped me a lot in the past year and it's very important to me. Very very beautiful. Very beautiful. Thank yeah. you. I've always I've always loved the symbolism of the Ouroboros, especially like it's gorgeous. yes, yes, definitely, especially in in our work. You know, it's very important because we have to transcend that and break the cycle. Right. Well, y'all, y'all want to give yourselves an introduction here? Like Vegas, would you, would you mind going first? Yes, of course. Oh. Uh, I don't know how far back you want me to go in introductions, but uh, it's I've up to been. You. Yeah, I, I, I've been practicing for a very, very long time, off and on. Um, but within the past um, five to ten years, I've really kind of given it all, all my energy into it and focused more on my path to complete the magnum opus in this lifetime, which means great, greatest work. Um, it's it's become pretty much every aspect of my life, and it's. It's something that I just want to kind of plant a seed in people's minds so they can see that it's it's important, you know. And, and I, I've talked a lot about this in the in the past and in the in the few times I've been on on other podcasts and and discussions with people that are in, in our community. We we need to focus on that path in order to not only better ourselves but be an example for others so they can. Uh, become something much greater than the limitations of this life. Um, we have been given a chance to do so, and that is the most important aspect of being on this planet or any planet, you know, and, and the, the system of being reborn over and over again is, you know, it's there for that purpose for us to find that magnum opus. Um, Ever since I've I've been uh, focusing on this, you know, more doors have been opening. I've been meeting more people, you know, that are on this path that are going to not only enrich my life, but I would hopefully, you know, help others reach that point. Um, when I was younger, when I was um, being brought up in the Pentecostal church, uh, I was taught how to do exorcisms from a very young age. Uh, for the first one that I witnessed, I was six years old. Uh, I was five, turning six years old. And I did my first exorcism on a person when I was 15 uh, with the help of some of the priests uh, that I knew. I've worked with the Warrens before. Um, I knew Lorraine and Ed personally. I know their daughter, Judy, and um, I've done a lot of work with her son, Chris, uh, who is the direct grandson of Ed and Lorraine. Um, a lot of their cases are have been publicized, you know, in the Conjuring films. Um, but there's a lot more there than than Hollywood portrayed. Um, when it definitely when it comes down to uh, how serious some of the things are, uh, there's a lot of things that have been involved in that. Uh, one of the things that I, I like to talk about uh, when we're touching base on the exorcisms um, specifically 
uh, some of the things that happen, it's not just a, it's not always a demonic or, or lower energy entity that's uh, attached or that has possessed someone. It it comes from an underlying psychological uh, issues, um, things that haven't been um, overcome. Um, I know if you do a lot of shadow work, you know, and try to not only mend the traumas from this life, but you carry trauma from other lives into this one. Um, I've dealt with a lot of that myself. Yeah, but um, me too. I, I feel it. Most definitely. And I think that's one of the main reasons why you and I have connected. Uh, there's a purpose for everyone in our paths. And I'm just so grateful for Brother Damien and how he's pulled us all together because we need each other to get through this, you right. know, and, and and help each other reach that point of completing Magnum Opus in this lifetime. Right. Um, so I know we, that... we should probably touch base on that since we've uh, brought up Damien in a sense, give people that are listening a little bit of a backdrop on the individual. Yes. Um but real quick, like how that ties in with the the great work in general, like as as people that are magus walking the path, and we run into one another, you know what I mean. We run into the ones that speak to our hearts the most, um, and I, I feel the same way with uh, Damien, especially finding him is what led me to you. So I'm grateful for that, <clears throat> and so we should probably touch base on that. Uh, I'd like to hear your perspective on Damien for just a couple of moments, real quick, and Magnum Opus in general. Of course. Um, I found him when I was struggling. Uh, I'm a recovering alcoholic and a recovering drug addict. And uh, I was very self-destructive in my 20s. You know, I've, I've gone through alcohol poisoning three times in my life. I've died numerous times um, from numerous health issues that I've gone through. Uh, and I honestly think that trauma is what leads us to this path because it opens our eyes and gives us a new, uh, new eyes, pretty much. Uh, some people, it, it's it takes a few times for them to go into shock, you know, to deal with trauma like that. But it, but being led to this path and finding Damien, uh, it pretty much changed my life and made me realize, you know, that everything that happens in our lifetime, in every lifetime, it, it, it doesn't. If it doesn't kill us, it makes us stronger. But also at the same aspect. Um, it helps us to see the truth and to see everything that's in front of us that we haven't seen. Um, the, the new eye concept, you know, it gives us a fresh take on life. Um, I know um, Damien's been through a lot of things in his lifetime, especially with being on death row for 18 years and being released. Um, when he was in prison, um, he focused on magic, you know, and energy work and and just focusing on the positive to the point where he was able to turn the cell into a sanctuary. Now that is one of the things that really helps me get through life. And a lot of us that are in his community, um, most of us that are in, um, in that small group of us, you know, I say small, but it's, it's really like 300 people, but there's like a small group of us, maybe 10 to 15 of us, um, that have connected to him. Um, not only on a, um, a level when it comes down to him being kind of a mentor, but also on a subconscious level. And I, I seriously, I, everything happens, you know, on our paths to lead us to where we're supposed to be. And finding that, you know, that he wants to start a school here in New Orleans to help people. I mean, I, I see that as, as my calling for this life, you know, and I just, I just want people to know that it, there's hope for all of us, you know, no matter how hard our lives get and how bad things are, you know, if, if we can just focus on the positive and just radiate that love light energy, we're able to accomplish great things. And that's why, um, I can't stress enough that, our purpose is to be on this path, you know, and to find each other. That's why I, I just, I love the community that we've, that we've found through him. You know, he's done so much, not just, you know, within the school and within the classes and everything that we do with him, but it, I've come to call him my brother because he's helped me out of dark places other than what we talk about, 
you know, he's, mm -hmm. he's a person, you know, he's, he's done so much for so many people and I just can't express how much gratitude I have for him and how much we all have for him. And we have some things going on um, that I can't really discuss right now mm -hmm. that, that you and I have discussed through about what our plans are uh, when it comes down to how we're going to express the gratitude and just being here tonight talking with you guys it it shows me that you know everything happens for a reason and we're all here together because that's part of the plan as part of the magnum opus the greatest work right and it's just i i just i'm just so happy to be here right now because it, <laughs> i i want so many people to hear our story you know and and to be inspired to be part of this Right, I agree. I've been I've been blown away with uh some of the people I've run into uh just from picking up this path and finding Damien and self and stuff and yes. I, I'm just as grateful. It really does blow my mind. Uh the I, I am quite speechless and thank you for saying all that. Like it it really did it touch touch my heart because it's like I'm coming from the same same position and different shoes, you know what I mean? But I heard yeah. you. Uh, I heard you uh, meep up there a little bit, Snake. What were we gonna say, Bud? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I appreciate Damien. Like, he, like, I we. What was that? What was that book uh, that we were that we were uh, practicing in book, club? In, in um, book club a while back? We were we were reading the. I believe it was High Magic. We read High yeah. Magic and Archangelus as a group here in Epsi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His his work That's awesome. really. It's really. It's really, really, really beautiful. Um, it, cool. As like as as far as like um, you know, ritualistic magic goes, I think that's like it's it's as simple as you can get it, and and it's and it's and it works. You know, like that's and that's all you got to do. You know, like in order to get it to you know people that that need that. You know, you, you like that's. I think that's the best way to do it is put it into a comprehensive form factor. Exactly, that, and that the layman can understand. Yeah, and in doing that, um, we become that beacon of light that people need to see, like that lighthouse out in the darkness. Yeah. Yeah, and that light brings more people together. You know, that's, that's that's the beautiful thing about it is as we gravitate towards a light in general, it brings others that. <clears throat> will soon become their own lights you know we, we're we all becoming stars in some way and i think that's the craziest thing about it all is it's like some of us are so lost in the dark and we find a path whatever that path is shamanism ceremonial doesn't matter as long as it's yep. trying to get to those higher states of consciousness through a tribal means exactly you you'll find yourselves all becoming beacons of light yeah Exactly. And, and the, every single path leads to this, you know, every type of practice, every type of religion, you know, even there's so many different ones. I mean, when I was going to school, I, I have my doctorate degree in divinity. And over the last um, 10, 15 years, I've seen there's so many similarities in every religion. I know um, some people don't really like to talk about, you know, the differences, but there are, there are so many similarities in them and if people would only realize that you know like i said all paths lead to this place you know we we go through every struggle in life you know and, and basically everyone eventually turns to you know to god to a higher power in some form and we just have to apply it you know you learn so much but at the same time we have to unlearn everything that we've been taught in order to get to this point it's like um, one of the Bible verses, it, it says, lean not on your own understanding. Basically what that means to me, in my opinion, through, after everything I've been through, is you have to unlearn everything that you've been taught in order to fully learn what the truth and to find your true calling and your purpose. You know, everything all comes together the way it's supposed to. Everyone is put in your path the way they're supposed to be put in your path at the right time you know and you just if you just maintain that focus and be true to yourself and be true to others i mean there's 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 billions of people on this planet and that 
that higher consciousness, you know, the subconscious mind and everything all connected to the HGA and connected to you, you are the HGA. If you realize that you're the higher guardian angel, I mean, the holy guardian angel is just always there within you. You just have to find it. You have to find that beacon of light within yourself in order to fully understand. I mean, that's why it takes so long to get to that point to complete the magnum opus in this lifetime or any lifetime. You know, when you start to do that, when you start to realize who you truly are, I use this scenario, you know, pretty often when I'm trying to explain this, but yeah, I don't know if you remember the Lion King when Simba's, you know, trying to find himself, goes off on his own and after something, after some traumatic experience of his father dying and he's, he's, you know, an adolescent, you know, almost adulthood and he's not knowing what to do. You know, he's lost after trying to find himself. And it, it works out pretty well because when he he's almost at the point of giving up, he looks up and sees his father in the clouds. Remember who you are. I mean, that is our purpose is to remember who we truly are. And we are what we're trying to find. You know, we just have to look within. Yeah, what you touched on in the beginning there about, like, <clears throat> unlearning what we've learned to find the truth essentially a something something really cracked my noggin with like gnosticism in particular uh about like dropping what i know and relearning everything is because there was a ton of symbolism and gnosticism that wasn't <clears throat> it was present right but it was decoded and put through a new lens uh under these other interpretations that you could find it in a way that it told a different story entirely. I mean, just take the 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 word Elohim for example. You know that that's very fascinating because most people associate it just with the name of God. But like in Gnosticism, it, it means many from above, essentially. You know, and that that yeah. blows my mind because for the longest time you hear people say Elohim and they they associate it with a one true God, essentially, or like a divine command. And that one of those little little nodes in Gnosticism just cracks your perception. And it's like, holy cow, what do I really know about this? Yeah. But yeah. It, it causes you to look within. Yeah. I think um, with with Gnosticism, it it's interesting to me, at least, like with the... Because, you know, you, you look up, you go look into the, uh, like, secret book of John, and it's almost, it's almost carried out as, like, because um, John is visited by, like, the, like, essentially the, um, the Trinity, the full Trinity, like, and, and uh, it's interesting, because it's, like, it, technically, like, and, and um, cause then then he starts uh talking to john about 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 this it's essentially a prequel um to the book of genesis like yes. in so in so far as like the book of genesis is like is like the playing out of of how uh like i don't know it, there's a lot of ways to see it but it, i i look at it like um like it's the playing out of of the evolution of of uh of of the world like like of 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 life and of uh of like the the spirit of man and like and like Adam and Eve is almost like a metaphor for the the spirit of man and woman right so so uh so the the whole thing with with the uh the secret book of john is is it's so um it's it's peculiar in that in that it has so much that it's trying to say and, but and, and and then it and then it has also so much uh like symbolism behind it too like um like this it's essentially like you know of course you 
you talk about the like the demiurgal like spirit the the uh the the uh abomination that uh that um uh barbalo created um in the absence of the whole right so so then so then you get this like strange like before the universe began kind of like um like forces of some kind like either either it's personified or literal who who knows or or just archetypal and symbolic it it doesn't really matter because the story itself is so so intense like the um when you read through it, it there's always like for me at least and I've read it to other people, and and they've yeah they've, that, uh, that it blew my mind when you read it to me. You yeah. read the whole thing to me that one <laughs> night, and I was just like, yeah. my mouth was just dropped open, like, <laughs> yeah. oh my god, I see through it all, like because it's it's <laughs> archetypal, like the whole yeah, yeah. thing is just archetypes. You can't read yeah. it literally, just like yeah, you can't yeah, read no, the yeah. Bible literally, yeah. you yeah, know. Yeah. But it blows your mind, dude. Like I remember when you read that to me, dude. I was baffled. But yeah, like like doesn't really matter how you read it or how you hear it. For some it's for some like it it can be more of a uh, like a unseen cosmology or whatever. Like I just take it as it is. It it's a it, it's in an interesting text, especially. Uh I and I think it's it's probably one of the best to start with if you if you uh, if you're going into gnosticism. Because it kind of, for for me at least, it it kind of when I read it uh, the first time all the way through, I, I I was like, wow, you know, this is really really interesting. Like it's just it's just a very intriguing, um, uh, text. It's it's like it, some with some people it just clicks with them. So right. for some it just jives with them, and it doesn't really matter how how you read it whether you read it in in a in a like you know very spiritual sense like where it's like an unseen cosmology or or mm. a symbolic or a archetypal like that text itself is 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 it has some resonance to it i think um as far it, as like gnostic texts go i think that's one of the one of the big ones uh, but the, of course you want to, if you do actually get into i think that Gnostic. was the text that got me really into yeah. gnosticism like i was kind of yeah. already just dabbling on the surface of gnosticism like with like taking uh, a lot of the, like the bible is just like astrological interpretations yeah. you know what i mean or no yeah, yeah. Astr astronomy in particular like literal stories of the stars through like archetypes so people would remember them and then like that brought me to other levels and then when i found when you showed me the apophrica of john i was blown away yeah real quick i, I want to ask vegas have you have you read the apophrica of john yet uh, yeah, I've pretty much read every single book that was taken out um, over and over. <laughs> um, it, it's, that's one of the things that really led me to this path, was finding those books. And one of the books that I found um, that really hit me was the book of Yahweh. Um, it, it describes in full detail, uh, all the. that was one of the first ones that was taken out. Uh, it des describes in full detail um, Christ teaching the apostles astrothergy and astrotheology and how to do the rituals. And, like, it's literally in Hebrew. I mean, like, everything that we practice, everything that we do in ceremonial magic and and things on that path. And in, in, that, in that sense, he's training them so they can carry that lineage. You know that we have to keep strong and keep true, and it's just it's shocking seeing it all played out that way and and just described in exact form with the formulas that we that we follow you know and when when the, the apocrypha was taken out it 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 made 
a lot of the Bible not make sense to someone that doesn't understand. I mean, the Bible in itself, the full Bible, with all the books in the right place, in the right order, it is a grimoire. And it is a book of spells for those that understand it. And that is one of the main things that I I just want to tell so many people. You know, in regards to Gnosticism, everything's there in black and white, just like that. You know, and when you find that things start to make sense, the puzzle pieces come together, you can stand back and look at the larger picture and see that that is what we're supposed to find. And that is what we're supposed to fully understand from not just standing back and looking at it um, with the eyes, you know, with fresh eyes, but also looking at it from within and and just showing showing it to people so they can see you know, everything that they're supposed to see. And it's, it's, it's so beautiful to see, to, to find people that, that are on that same page, you know, and knowing that the Apocrypha isn't as secret as it used to be. It's, it's there for people to find. You just have to know where to look and, and, and be able to understand it. And everything comes together you know, in regards to that, I mean, if you were to pick up a Bible that has all the books in place in the, in there, the right, is there a specific, um, like, like Bible that you know of that you could like yes. call the name of, like, yeah, okay. there, there's one. Um, well, the Mount Sinai Bible has all the books in, um, and everything in place. So they've copied it, and. Uh, one of the oldest ones that I have is from 1865, and it is so old. It's one of those real big, heavy. Um, it's almost like a pressed, like a pressed wood, and it's got it's like a leather bound, and the pages are so paper thin that you have to use a pair of tweezers to turn the pages that because it. <laughs> if you don't, you pull on it too hard, you'll tear it. I mean, it's yeah. so. Agile, and it's got the old brass clasps on it and holding it closed and my goodness that's cool and beautiful i mean that is my main grimoire and that is what i use a lot of you know and and it's what i read from yeah, because for... it, it's it's just beautiful i mean if you could get your hands on one of those I mean, it was given to me as a gift uh a few years ago by one of my close friends who has since then passed and it's just it's just mind blowing seeing everything all in order. I mean, they're talking about magi, they're talking about you know, David practicing, they're talking about everything that was that is something that a lot of mainstream religions don't like to talk about because it contradicts everything that they teach. And it's just if you if you can get your hands on one of those old Bibles I'd say do it. I mean, there's so there's so few of them in existence now because they've been destroyed or they've been, you know, broken to the point where you can't even read them because they're just the one that I have is in near perfect condition even though it's so so old. It's still have you, have you made um like uh like have you got have you gotten like one of those um book scanners? And like and like just flipped through each page and like and like scanned all of it or or have you not done that? Like I have I haven't done that as of yet, but I'd have to find one that would be a hand scanner because if I was try if I would try to place it on an actual scanner, it would be it would probably break the binding because of how fragile the whole thing is. Yeah. And it would have to be a like like a, you know what I'm talking about, like one of those yeah. plug in plug in hand scanners that you can plug into a computer mm -hmm. you know, usb yeah. i think that would be the, the best way to do it but i have gone through it and taken some photos of the books and it even has more chapters and more verses in every book that is still that is that is in the king king james version and then that you know all the new newer versions of it it has more books in it and more verses in it than any bible i've ever seen Wow. And everything makes sense. Yeah. If you, I, I was just about to say real quick, like, what, how come, how come, well, 
I say this, but I have a hunch as to why. But how come there isn't a a publisher that'll accept a bind of all of them in order? You know what I mean? Because they're all out there, but they're just separate. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be really cool to see somebody go out on a limb on an earned alias <clears throat> and publish a full a full version including all the apophrica and so uh, yeah in just order everything to, that, everything that be, just in yeah. perfect or order and union maybe we should <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what we've been talking about around here too like i've, I've talked to people that like they're like i've always asked that question too i'm like why isn't there this around like they're, they're like well why don't you do it i'm like huh? <laughs> Maybe. seriously why don't we start a publishing company and just publish all the all the frib- forbidden texts you know yeah. tara warwick a, a youtuber I, I think is warhammer something i i'm probably i'm probably destroying it i'm not I'm not promoting him right but he's published a lot of works like 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 pamphlets that you would just like hand out like cheap pamphlets and sells them on uh Amazon and other places and they're actually pretty good like i i like we were before before you joined in we were uh yeah, i we think were talking about the corpus hermeticum. hermeticum yeah and like i have a paper copy that Tara Warwick um produced and i don't i can't remember i'd have to look at the publisher and all that cuz he may not be the publisher but if if this guy can do it like why can't a group of people that are devoted like make like a compendium of all the gnostic texts and the holy bible in like a proper order uh and then produce like j- at least starting out a hundred copies and just see what happens and good quality ones too you know that would be amazing i i th- would definitely be down for that and <laughs> i think that would that would that would just be mind-blowing just for people to have it physically in their hands you know as it should be yeah you know even if it's a scan like i mean there's like over there's close to a thousand pages in the bible I mean, like in in the one that I have, and if I was to go through the whole thing and scan it the way it is, you know, with the because there's drawings of it. I mean, there's drawings of unicorns in this thing. I no mean, way! No yeah. way! Yeah, there's drawings of unicorns and dinosaurs with people. I mean, it blows everything from science out of the water. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's hundred percent truth, yeah. and there's not watered down it's it's not sure coated i mean it's right there in your face and if people were to see everything that was real you know and it, it takes away the whole concept of Dar- darwinism and it takes away the whole concept of evolution and it proves that yes we did walk with dinosaurs back then yes dragons did exist because there's drawings of dragons with people in this thing <laughs> I mean, like there it has the old. It's it, somebody, uh, the people that made it. They hand made it and hand drew these things into it. You know that's why there, there's so few copies of it that exist. I gotta see this thing now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see this thing now. I'm, I'm so curious. It's, but it's I beautiful. do. We're, we're kind of coming full circle in a beautiful way. So like, let's. Like, let's go down the avenue of, like, the Magi of the past, right? Yes. Like, so, like, there's been so many tales of, like, in Christianity where I grew up, you know, there's these tales of these prophets and these biblical characters, and almost half of them were Magi. And I didn't know yes. that until later, but they they were practicing magicians, and it blew my yes. mind. So, I, I want to hear some of your thoughts on that. Vegas. <laughs> Well, um, you're right, 100%. Um, A lot of, even some of the laymen that were in the Bible, you know, were practicing magicians. And it wasn't always the kings, you know, it wasn't always the royalty. Even though we are divinity ourselves, um, we have that consciousness in us, and we come from the same material of the angels and the Goetic demons, you know, the, the spirits and everything, we're all connected, we're all one. We all come from, from the same energy, you know, we're all from that source that we draw from, you know. But I, I, 
seriously, it's just people need to know this stuff. They need to know that everything that they've learned, they need to unlearn what they've learned and relearn the truth. And if we were to take that and just, even if we were just to give it away, you know, to people, you know, just not even charge them, you know, just just so they see it and, and understand that it does exist and it's real, I mean, they will see how many Magi existed back then and exist now. I mean, like, they'll see the balance of good and evil in darkness and light, you know, how one has to see that darkness exists because of light and light exists because of darkness. And they, if they were to see how many people in the Bible practiced, did rituals like this, you know, they would see that it's not wrong because that's one of the reasons why most of my family doesn't speak to me. My own yeah. blood speak to me because they think that I'm doing something wrong when in fact they're the ones that aren't awake. I mean, it does, and we've discussed this before previously, you know, it hurts that some of my family doesn't see that and they would rather practice a lie than practice truth. But I, as long as I plant a seed in their mind or plant the seed in somebody's mind, it might grow into something beautiful and I might save them. I mean, like the whole concept of savior, you know, we are our own savior. Yeah. We, we are able to save others through this. So I'm, I'm going full force with this. I, I seriously, I, I think that we need, we need to publish this. You know, people need to see the truth. I agree. It'd be beautiful. On, on, on the, on the, uh, the note of, uh, of, uh, you know, light with light cannot be without darkness and darkness cannot be without light. This, this, um, this, this whole, um, it, it was called like, I think the uh, old, like alchemical schools, they called this like the coincidencia oppositorum, which was like the unity of opposites. And, and, in in and it, it goes so far back, this, this coincidencia oppositorum goes so far back as to like um, ancient Taoism, you know, like Lao Tzu, in in this um, in the same kind of uh, it's it's that's where that uh, the yin and yang came from, right? So like the you have you have the light and dark, uh, each of them have a little bit of each other in them, and then and then. And then the yin yang is su supposed to be spinning, right? And that yeah. continuous spin um, uh, is is the flow of of the of time itself, right? The present moment. But then yes. in the middle, in the middle, where the where the black, the darkness and light meet, there's no line there, of course. But where that light and dark meat is is the Tao, and this is like the uh this is the beyond concept because there's no you can't see a line there's no line it's just where they both meet right it's like exactly it's this it's this uh conceptual basis of of understanding that opposites can be reconciled and and you can kind of transcend the dualistic nature of of yourself and understand that uh that you know pretty the much in a lot of like uh, deep like <laughs> alchemy yeah 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 i i think i think uh the bottom line like i think that this saying this simple saying really sums it up it's this too shall pass that's not in the Tao Te Ching or anything like that, but, but I think I think that's really, um, the that's the realization that this too shall pass, like all of it doesn't matter, but yeah. but it it does it does it does matter, but it's but it's you don't need to worry about it, you know, right. <laughs> like, like, let, yeah. yeah, let that shit go, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the whirling wheels. <laughs> that kind of goes time... into samsara, too. 
Yeah, t- time is not a line; it's a loop. It's a constant loop. Yeah, and well, never ending. So now we can bring him back to Gnosticism again. Here we go. Like, like when it comes to like Gnosticism, you know, the tale it tells about like the adversaries, right? And it's not just one adversary in this one. It's there's a lot of them, and they don't like us. <laughs> they don't like us at all, and they're trying to keep us here and keep us hypnotized. And, and there's there's a way to get out, and it's through like pure will and love and devotion. Um, and it's it's very interesting to see that that kind of play out a story that's illustrating that there that you need to find a way out and the way is like is source uh the true source not not what's illustrated before us now uh and that kind of ties into like what were we talking about in the beginning with like your your picture with the orb eating its own tail to some extent exactly it, it's just it, it's all right there plain in black and white and I just, I want people to see that. That's why I use this talisman on every social network that I'm on, because I want people to say, what does that mean? You know, I I just want to plant a seed with it, even if they're just skimming over my link tree and finding all my social media accounts and and they see it and they're like, okay, what what is that? What is that uh, symbolism? You know, and and it opens the door because you you have to not only plant a seed, but you got to open those doors in their minds. You know, so they can escape that and transcend samsara, you know, to be able to get past that so they can no longer plateau. Because people, and what I've what I've seen so many times, you know, even just with speaking with people in different churches, they get to the point where they think, okay, this is it. Um, you know, there's nothing past this. You know, I, they they think they can't level up. But the thing is... We can all level up and get to that point where we no longer have to keep coming back. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I really, I really like the symbolism of the the adversary that plays out in narcissism. Um, there's there's a few differences though. It's pretty clear. <clears throat> so there's the snake in the grass, and then there's there's individuals that come up to figures in the Bible, but it's not always a snake. Like it's it's many different routes that the 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 devil archetype tries to manipulate people, but it's it's never one solid foundation of a figure. But they always refer to like the true source in a very particular manner, and I, I found that really fascinating. Yeah, exactly. It, it that it comes to you in an acceptable form, you know, something that that you. you you take notice of it's it's just like angels i mean we could be entertaining angels at all times through things that that we accept it's like um in our dreams and our visions when we sleep you know it, it comes to us in a way that we can accept you know a way that we will understand and not only will we understand but sometimes uh we don't understand what it means that's why we tried to do dream interpretation you know and things like that because it, it it's there in our mind it's our subconscious and our higher subconscious speaking to us through these through the visions while we sleep and while we sleep it, it we're connecting to our higher selves so it's like a channel and it's a direct channel from that being that exists that is our true form and so everything is just right there i mean it's it's there for a reason you know and the same thing with with narcissism everything's there for us to find you know and everything all comes together it it comes back to the to the puzzle concept where everything is right there in front of us we just have to know exactly but sometimes we have to look at the front of the box you know to understand where it all goes but we need to get out of that box we need to break free from those chains it's like like the devil card in tarot you know the the there's two people standing in front of him in chains but you don't realize that those chains are loosely on them. So we have the choice to take them off ourselves Mm -hmm. and people are constantly tied down and chained down to this life, but we're not, we're, we're, we have the choice to take them off and just be free and free ourselves and free our mind and free other people. I think, yeah, you illustrated the adversary very well. Thank you so much. 
I think that um that representing uh the divine like whether it be like the HGA or the soul or or whatever like visionary art I think that sector um I know it ha has had a large impact on on me um uh the like for instance the um painter uh Alex Gray I uh, knew Alex you were going to say it. I was waiting for it. I was itching for it. I was like, yes. The shaman think, with a paintbrush. Yeah. I think um I think his representations of things are so spot on. And and he doesn't he doesn't really den like denote what it is. He he calls his painting something, but it's like he, even he, like the mysteries of some of the things that many people have seen, like seen in, in vision and stuff like that. And he paints them so accurately. And, and it's, um, and it's very, it's very eye opening. Some of, some of the, uh, painting he do, he does. Like, I think the, um, the, the ability to do it at that at that capacity is it's is it it's to me it's it's amazing but but really like i think the impact of visionary art in and of itself like especially especially like the shamanic uh visionary art whether whether you're trying to depict something from an ayahuasca trip or a dimethyltryptamine trip or uh, shrooms or peyote or whatever. Uh, I think I think uh, if if you can bring that back onto Earth, like in the form of a canvas or or whatever, have you? I I think that uh, that I think people should should uh, do that <laughs> if you have the ability <laughs> right. because exactly. that's that's that that helps. The, this type of cause i think because um it's very difficult when when people because a lot of people are very visual like type learner you know like they 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 learn off of off of uh seeing um and what you know that uh add that age old adage uh seeing is believing <laughs> like you know like um, yeah I think I think that uh that seeing these things are are um are the uh just it just puts so much mystery behind life. Like I remember I remember seeing some visionary art before I even dabbled in psychedelics or or really anything of that matter. And and um and seeing those things I think like just my because my father was a painter and he was he was a visionary painter and painted a lot of the things that he saw in some of his visions and and uh i think that um that uh that seeing those things like really kind of impacted like really impacted me like to really see like there is mystery behind the curtain you know <laughs> like there's something going on here. Yeah, the, and, the uh, curtain. Yeah, 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 go on. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, behind the curtain, the yeah. wizard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would love to see some of Alex's work under a black light. Oh, that would be crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Y'all have seen my tapestry behind me, right? They're it's the light friends. worker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's one of my favorite pieces by Alex Gray. I also have uh, Despair. His uh, So when I wake up in the morning, I'm facing despair. But this is poetic for me because of struggles. But So like I face despair, and it's like facing night terrors. And I wake up, and I face the day. And on my way out the door, I look towards the path, the light worker, and the goal I have. And that's that's what I walk out the door with. And uh, it's like a whole like shadow work ceremony I do almost every single morning. And it's like Alex Gray's work really illustrates some visual 
um archetypes that like just like bring you into this space of thinking to where you can just go deeper with yourself and face yourself truly in a weird way and and especially like the translucent skin it like reminds you of your mortality you know like the sand mandala yeah yes that, that's absolutely amazing I, I like how you have that uh and you face despair when you wake up and it's like you're dealing with everything in before you leave yeah <clears throat> Yeah, I'll make sure to have those in the slideshow too at some point, but they they probably won't be synchronized for the conversation. But it'll make sense once they get there. That's what matters. <laughs> but I, I I I'm blown away with this discussion. I really am. I I what? <laughs> I want to backtrack a little bit too, like because this this is all tied together so well, and it's like. We don't have to put any effort in. It's just having a good conversation, you know. But these dots have tied together so well with, like, the shamanistic journey and, like, understanding what truth is uh, through the self and, like, also, like, the love of a tribe, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah, that that's very important. Everything is there in that, uh, in the sense that it's there for us to, to find. In that aspect, you know, so it not only betters us, it betters everyone else that's involved. And the, the respect is one of the main things that has to be in place for it to take place. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think that, that the thing with, um, spec, like, and, and even, even like talking about like, uh, humbling yourself to, to allow yourself to just be. You know, like essentially, like I, I think in the world that there, I, I don't really want to get too like into negativity or anything like that, but I think I think a lot of people have problem with um with like there's there's a line where they they need and 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 I and I'm I'm guilty of this too in some aspects. You know, like, and, and like, and like the line between who you see yourself as and then the need, the, the felt need to, um, express that to other people, um, uh, in the sense of like they take that same view and they make and you try to project that onto them so they know who you are and so like so like this this i think seems like the the root cause of 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 conflict i think in 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 human being because the second you do that and then the second they no longer see you as the expression of yourself that you're trying to project is the second that like it seems like uh there's a miss like like a how do i put this a like a misdirection like like you you have like for a while like you you know you express yourself and you you get in your your relationship with this friend of, or whoever and then and then like and then the path diverges into the view that they have of yourself and then the view that you have of yourself. And then there are two different things at that point. But at first it may have been the same or, or close to similar. But then, but then that's where I think conflict is derived, is that biases become the reality. And, 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 from biases and and from like and then also like you trying to express who you are too much is also can derive conflict it's the same thing it goes both ways like but but i think that uh to to gain and and that's a it's a huge problem in culture right now and i think i think social media 
and and all this stuff. It it, it kind of it can propel it can propel it. Um, I'm yes. not saying it does, but it can. Um, yeah, and, it's, uh, and, it's and I, the media. I, yeah, go ahead. It's the media beast. It's there to distract us. Yeah. Well, I I think I think I'm just saying like to provide unity. Effort, everyone has to kind of let go. Uh, like this, the community community is like built upon, um, like a a uh, like a value system, culture, and and then when uh, the the problem I've seen with community based things is is that is that of course you have idea uh, differences in ideology and whatever have you, but but I think the main thing is is the the lack of respect, like you said, like the lack of of people um, putting their sword down. You just have to throw that away, and and then just being, you know, like it's not that hard. But 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 it seems like it's it's it seems like it's it's easier. Possible. It seems impossible. Done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, also, Go ahead. it also seems impossible to kill your ego, but it is possible. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, to 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 some extent, we can't. But well, it doesn't. It doesn't exist. We co- we, we coexist with it. <laughs> oh no, no, we're not going down the rabbit hole. Not tonight. <laughs> I just seen the white rabbit jump across the screen, so I think that we need to go down that hole briefly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why is there no self snake? Because <laughs> yeah. you're the imagination of yourself. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't argue that because I agree with that. There actually isn't an ego, and it's just an illusion brought about by uh, your brain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, thought... I think Bill Higgs said it very well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> everything is projected from our minds and everything that we think exists does exist and even problems you know daily problems that we deal with it, it doesn't have to be a problem it can it's just letting go of everything well i think i think that um that there there's this there's this concept and it goes into a, it goes into hinduism like especially like Advaita Vedanta, and also it goes into Buddhism, traditional Buddhism. But those two schools, they 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 kind of fight with each other a little bit. Um, I think that uh, that uh, it's it, I I don't want to get into it too too extreme because it's 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 not not really a problem. It's just they argue with each other. Uh, but but the but the but the thing is is like the uh, there is in Buddhism there, there's two divergent uh, 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 like ideologies like in Buddhism uh, there's the teaching of anatta and anatta is I don't even know if I'm botching that or not pronunciation of that but but anatta is essentially um, the teaching that there is no self uh, there is no soul and there is no uh ego there never was um and the realization of this is is uh like to essentially go down one path and then and then but then there is another school which is advaita vedanta which which is a hindu based teaching and this is that you are the higher self that uh uh you are essentially the soul and the and the self realization leads you to this but i think i think there's uh i don't really want to go deeply into what i think but because it, well, because it, it kind of really... it kind of matters honestly 
it because does, this it, this entails yeah. a lot of the path uh, on ceremonial magic in in line with like gnosticism as well so it matters and you're illustrating yeah. it very well so you do yeah, whatever uh, you like i i think well i i think that um because <laughs> well so i think i know there's a soul for one because i've seen it but at the same time i don't see how you could say or at least i don't think i could say to myself i am that because i know that if i say that that's just me saying i am a concept essentially because i i know i'm not that i'm just essentially an imaginary uh version of like the it's it's like it's like the concept let me let me, let me put down the concept of maya because maya is is the is the thing that uh i've been speaking so the maya in hinduism is this grand illusion all of life all of existence is part of this grand illusion and then you have uh brahman which is the uh, ultimate reality which is like essentially the, the purest form without words without uh like whatever have you it's it it could be potentially unachievable with a self or it could be achievable with a self but it de 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 determining on whether or not who you are different is lie um but but the thing is is this is this is a very complicated thing cuz like so <laughs> like who is it that speaks the word i that's that's the question that uh whether or not the answer it's a very is practical what, platform uh, yeah oh. whether or not the answer to that question and within yourself determines kind of what path you're going down in some senses exactly and we must realize that there is no spoon yeah <laughs> essentially <laughs> essentially and that 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 but but it's but it's Gotta it's like love them as, white rabbits. <laughs> as an actor here in whatever this is right like like you want to take it seriously and you want to live a good life and you want to be compassionate and you want to be because just because it, there's no reason other <laughs> just <laughs> so you can <laughs> Well, that, that was all beautifully said. It, it all goes back to the to the way that the the books that are left in the Bible. I'm going to circle back a bit. Uh, the books that are that are in the Bible, the mainstream one that's been highly edited numerous numerous times over. Um, most of the those texts were um, translated incorrectly uh, from the the original Hebrew after those books were taken out. And the main thing uh, that really stands out to me, the, the, the line, I am that I am, um, if you translate it directly from Hebrew, from the original Dead Sea Scrolls, it says, uh, I am that, comma, I am. So mm -hmm. they, took, they took out the comma. So I found the best way for me to see and remember who I am and remember who everyone is, that we're all connected. We're not just all connected. We're all one thing. You go around one day, just take, just take a day, take a couple hours out of your day, go for a walk. And constantly, when you see anything, I am that, comma, I am. I am that. I am. You're, re you're reinforcing it within yourself and within your higher subconscious that you are everything. It's that, it it's that, it's that um, so yeah, um. It, it, yeah, <laughs> it's it all down. And also Genesis, 
in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. They took the S off of God and made it, it, it's the original text is God's. In the beginning, the gods created everything. We are God and we created everything in this world. So not only do we make everything that is in our own lives and everything in this world and everything in the universe, we've created the simulation. We've created everything that holds us back. That's why we have to break free from those chains, you know, in order to fully understand. Yeah. We'll circle again. Trying yes. to get out of samsara. Yes. Well, exactly. Honestly, guys, this this has been a beautiful discussion. We can wrap up shop if you're all ready. Yeah. It's, it's up to you guys unless that... you want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is honestly a good stopping point. Because, like, we, we've gone full circle, like, three, three five times in, like, the be- most beautiful way possible, you know? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Illustrating the the many different perspectives of uh, what samsara is and, like, what is the self. Is there is a self at all and how we are all self through everything. <laughs> it's, it's almost never ending. But it's, it it's, is beautiful. It's never ending like the circle, that, like that loop of time. Because people... I I I really don't like talking about dreams, but there is a dream that I had that I truly believe that I transcended myself into a past life directly. Um, it was highly vivid and visual, and I remember it like it like it just happened now. Even it was I think it was a year ago. Um, I had a dream that I was walking down the street uh, in what looked like. Um, the 1900s, like the early, or maybe the late 1800s. And I had, I was uh, looking around at people and I was trying to figure out where I was. I felt like my subconscious was fully aware. And, and I went and I picked up a newspaper uh, that was lying on a bench. And it said, like, I think it was 1888. Um, it was a date on the top of the newspaper. And for the life of me, I could not look at anyone in the eye. Like, I tried to show them. I tried to say, hey, do, do you know what year it is? Like, and nobody was paying attention to me. But when I started to fully understand where I was and who I was, that's when everyone started to look at me. It's, it's just like uh, uh, Inception. You know, when you, the movie Inception, when you were walking down the simulation, walking in the simulation, and you started to make yourself aware of yourself, that's when you start to get attacked by um, your subconscious beings. It was, it's like a revelation. You know, Yeah. you, you make yourself, you, make, you become aware, and everyone around you realizes that you're aware. And they hunger for that, and they feed off of that, and they know that there's something that they're missing. That's why we have to lead people to this path, because they're going to keep not only attacking themselves, but attacking you until they wake up and see that they have control over it, and they can, they as well can transcend this life. Yeah, yeah. Some deep stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I like what... um. I, I I heard it from Damien first in particular, but it, I can't remember who uh, actually said it. But you know, b- before enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. You know, after enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water, and that kind of always <clears throat> reminded me, in some sense, about how either path is right it's just about which lens you can look through that path you know and that that makes the biggest difference you know yeah it does it definitely does as we enter the age of aquarius (laughs) chop wood carry water chop wood (laughs)
carry water. Follow the Car- man with the carpenter pit- and then <laughs> the man with the water pitchers. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Full circle again. <laughs> Perfecto. Exactly. Amanda. I definitely enjoyed this discussion and I'm down for another one eventually. Um, if you'd like to. I, I'm oh, absolutely. More, I, I love doing more. this. Yeah, this was fun. It's good to know people that understand exactly what, I ta- what I'm talking about. Because when I try to discuss this with people that are asleep, they think I'm crazy. So it's good to <laughs> Me too. talk to people. It's good to talk to people and get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree. Oh, this was dope. We're going to do it again. Don't doubt it. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Well, cue the cue my uh, outro music. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> let me let me real quick because I, in the beginning we didn't give this man an introduction, but I'll make sure to give him a nice outro. Last but not least, here is Snake. You can find him on Sna- SoundCloud. <laughs> SoundCloud. <laughs> SoundCloud. <laughs> there will be a link in the description below the video. Please check out his music. This guy made the intro and outro to our uh, podcast, and I'm greatly appreciative because it really sets the tone, and I think it does us just. Thank you so much, Snake, and don't forget the lovely philosophy he's shared with you you here today as well. And as well, Vegas Vamp joined us. We talked about a lot of things, and we've been bonding more, and you will see more of Vegas, I hope. Sounds good. And I'm going to plug Brother Damien's Patreon. I think if anyone um, would like to learn um, at a at a steady and understanding pace that is not confusing at all, that is fully there and open for you to, to learn and just be involved in this beautiful, beautiful community of ours, go ahead and follow him on Patreon, Damien Eccles. Um, he's saved countless lives with his story. Beautiful. I'm one for sure. <laughs> hey, this has been a pleasure. We're going to do it again. Thank you for joining. See? Thank you for having us. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>